Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Today I have a Median Akoya P5373 in front of me. I bought this one on an auction and it was listed as not tested. From experience I know that not tested simply means not working. It was in a very dirty and dusty state, but the main reason for me to get it was a GTX 960 which is supposed to be inside. My hope was that at least the GPU would still be working. Let's see if we can save something from the machine. For me, Median is the brand related to the German supermarket chain called Aldi. I remember the days where they would have a PC bundle on offer with a price value ratio that had no competition at the time. The result, at least in my country at the time, was a huge line in front of the stores, hours before opening time. Probably this one has been bought through another channel, at least I can't find any references linking it to Aldi. The info on Median's website is not very helpful as the GPU and CPU are left out somehow. Another website shows us the full specifications, which I base myself on to make the purchase. It should have a Core i5 6400S CPU, 8GB of DDR4, a 1TB hard disk and a 128GB M2 SSD, and an NVIDIA GTX 960 with 4GB as a graphical card. I did some cleaning before the video, so let us have a look at the machine before we start with checking what's wrong with it. The case has some kind of a carbon look, but as you can clearly see, the example I have has seen better days. It has quite some scratches on the front. All front ports and drives are hidden behind the front cover. On top we have the DVD drive, below that a removable hard disk tray. And the last cover is for front USB and audio and an SD card reader. On the back we can clearly see the video card taking in two slots, good sign. The DVI output on the motherboard itself has been covered somehow, maybe to prevent connecting a bundled monitor to that port instead of the one on the GTX 960, not sure. Inside we can see that the case is pretty small for its contents. The hard disk has been removed but luckily the GPU, as we could see from the outside as well, is still here. Time for a first test. Nothing comes on the screen, not that I'm really surprised. We can see the fan spinning after pressing the power button, but that's more or less all that happens. Let me get that video card out to see if we can get output on the mainboard video ports instead. Looks like we indeed have an NVIDIA GTX 960 here, unbranded. Let's give it another try with VGA on the motherboard now. Nope, no improvement. Next attempt is to replace the memory dim with a non-good one. Usually there would be some kind of beep code when something's wrong with the memory, but it's worth a try. No success either. Time to go a step further. Let me disconnect everything and get the mainboard out of the case. Same for the power supply. I will also remove the M2 SSD, so we are sure that we have only the minimum set of components left. Still nothing. At this point we have only the memory, which we know is good, the motherboard and the CPU left. Let's get that CPU out first. To start I need to remove the CPU cooler, and I really hate this kind of system using these plastic clips. 
I somehow never seem to manage to get this to come off or install fluid. Old thermal paste as expected. That's better. As you can see, the specs were right and this is indeed an i5-6400 in here. Without another 6th gen CPU or compatible motherboard, we can't really know which one of both is broken. From experience, I do know that the chance that a motherboard is broken versus a CPU is a lot higher. With that information in mind, I decided to buy a replacement motherboard. This wasn't as easy as it sounds, as I didn't find a new compatible motherboard, at least not for a reasonable price or with a reasonable delivery time. I did find this Asus motherboard with the B150 chipset on eBay, which should work fine. The good thing is that it's bundled with a CPU, a G4560, so if it turns out to be the CPU after all, I can move on. The downside is that there is no M2 slot on the motherboard, I'll have to use a SATA SSD instead. A few days later I got the package in good condition. One thing I didn't see when ordering this is the requirement for an 8-pin power connector. I could go for an adapter, but I did happen to have a spare Supermicro PSU with the right connector laying around. Let's first test if the replacement is actually working. Very handy that we have that spare CPU as well now. Ok, that's good. We can see the G4560 and the motherboard are working fine. The motherboard seems to have some nice LEDs on it as well. Let me remove all connectors. And then remove the fan. Again, the same annoying system unfortunately. After cleaning, we can have a look at the G4560. Let's swap that one with the i5-6400 instead. A bit of fresh thermal paste won't hurt, then I can put back the CPU cooler. I really hope this was the last time. Let's see now if the original CPU is working and if I was right about the broken motherboard. Seems I was, good to see. Let's put everything back together now. Before we do, a quick overview. We have the motherboard with installed CPU and 8GB of RAM already on there, an additional 8GB module, the new power supply, SATA SSD that will replace the M2, 1TB hard disk, the GTX 960 and of course the case itself. Let me start by installing the second 8GB memory module for a total of 16GB. Then we can replace the I.O. shield with the one matching the new motherboard. Now we can put the main board in the case. And get it fixed. As I now wanted to connect the power switch and power LED, I had a look in the manual of the motherboard. Strangely enough, there was no detail about the front panel connector pinup. This is in most cases the only reason for me to even look in the manual. Fortunately, I quickly found the matching pinout for a similar Asus motherboard. Now that we know where to, we can get these connected properly. And do the same for the other front panel connectors. Before installing the power supply, I will connect the DVD drive to SATA as there is a very limited space. Then we can get that power supply in there.
After it's fixed to the case, we can get it connected and try to organize the massive amount of cables in the small case. Ok, I guess. Let's put the drives in the case now. First the hard disk, which gets fixed from the bottom. For now, I will just put the SSD in this cage. But first I will connect the SATA cables and provide power. Then we can also install the SSD. We arrived at the last component, the GPU. As I mentioned, there really isn't a lot of space here. I'll first need to get that 8 pin cable out of the way again. That seems to work. Now I'll reconnect the 8 pin cable and also the 6 pin to the video card which I purposely kept aside. All that's left to do is to fix the card to the case. And then I can close it. Time to test if all of this went well. The fans are spinning, the power LED is working, and we got something on the screen. So far so good. Let me enter the BIOS setup. We can see the CPU as before, 16GB of memory coming from the two 8GB modules, and it looks like all the SATA drives are here as well. Let's exit the BIOS setup and boot into Windows. Before we continue, I will start by installing all updates. As you can see, there is a message that this PC doesn't meet the requirements for an official upgrade to Windows 11. If you would want to work around that, I did a series of videos to do exactly that. I'll put a card here in case you're interested. After the reboot, we can see that all drivers are installed as expected. We can see the video card here, the SSD and hard disk, and the CPU. Time for some basic benchmarking, starting with the CPU benchmark in Geekbench 5. Not bad at all, higher than expected to be honest. I was looking at some results in the Geekbench browser for the CPU and most of them were lower I believe. 
Let me add the result to my account. Let's test the GTX 960 as well. Seems like it's still in good condition, exactly as I had hoped. Now that we saw everything is working well, let's go check gaming performance. First up is 3D Mark. And the score is in line with my expectations. Definitely still suitable for some fun gaming on Full HD. Talking about that, let's check out GTA 5. Let me run the benchmark with these settings. Some anti-aliasing and everything on very high. Seems like this is running pretty fine. That's it for the video. I'm glad to see that I managed to get this machine up and running again as it should. It's not the newest, but still worth a lot of fun. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video and if you did, please put a thumbs up. If you like this kind of content and more of the same, don't hesitate and subscribe to the channel for more. Thanks again and hope to see you back here soon.